Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink. It's time for some discussion of general action RPGs today. So while this channel is going to remain about Path of Exile, this is a bit of a one-off looking at Diablo Immortal, a game that some people cited as a potential challenger in the action RPG market. Well, I went into it with an open mind, but low expectations. I'd read a bunch of negative reviews from people I trusted, but I thought, I want to go into this and be as fair as I can. I gotta say that actually my expectations were not low enough. The low expectations I had were not met and it wasn't close. This game is full of predatory monetization that is just off the planet. And additionally, there's a bunch of other issues with it. But let's start with the minor gripes. These are all things I think Blizzard could realistically fix. So firstly, when I installed the game, as always happens with a new game, you see the terms of service slash end user license agreement. And you're prompted to click it and find out all of the details of the legalities related to the game. Well, that was something that could easily be clicked past. I accidentally clicked past it, and I'm like, hey, I should read that, especially with me intending to review it and play it on stream and things like that. I need to make sure what the contents of this are. Well, I was not able to find any of it online. I searched. I searched on the Blizzard website. I searched in the Blizzard launcher. I searched in the game client itself. I could not find it. So that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Terms of service is just something you can misclick past and then you can't find them. Now, that is something that should set off a few alarm bells, but again, that's something that's fixable. There's a bunch of issues with the port from the mobile platform to the PC platform. Uh, there's a number of little trivial things, like instead of saying click here, it says tap here. This is like one of those things that's a little bit annoying, but doesn't really make the game any worse. It's just a bit silly. There's also a number of places where you would intuitively expect the way to navigate through a menu is to click in a spot and then use your mouse wheel to scroll it. That doesn't work and you need to click and drag. This is really abnormal behavior for a PC game. You would have thought that Blizzard with all their experience in making PC games in the past would have been able to get that simple interface thing right. The default controls in the game are awkward. WASD movement with one, two, three, four as your primary skills and Q as your life flask. This is difficult. This is not unmanageable, but it's difficult. Alternately, you can drop the WASD and use the mouse instead, which is what I ended up doing, and is what I would recommend if you decide that you want to subject yourself to this game as well. The control responsiveness is good maybe 95% of the time, but the other 5% of the time it's just awful. There is no feedback on why your skills aren't working. You're pressing 4, trying to hit a monster with your big skill, and you're just getting no feedback as to why it's not functioning. I don't know why that is, but ultimately that's one of those things that I think Blizzard could fix. The other thing that's really noticeable is that the game is what I term Blizzard easy while you're leveling, in the sense that it treats you like you're a bit of a fool. You find that you're just cruising through everything, you're making big mistakes while you're playing, and you're not coming close to being killed. The only time I died in my time playing this game uh, was to a problem where the controller was just not responding. So I'm trying to press the button, I'm trying to give instructions to my character to go somewhere, and they're not, just going, they're not going there at all. That was the only time I died. There was a time where apparently someone who was watching me play on stream said that I was standing in fire for an entire boss because partly the effect on the screen as to what the safe areas were and what the dangerous areas were wasn't clear. And also the fire was just so undertuned that I just didn't feel like I was taking any damage. I didn't have any feedback saying, hey, you're making a mistake here, you need to fix that. All of these are the sorts of things that are moderate problems, but not anything I would say is particularly serious. But what is serious is the monetization of this game. In the background, you can see me playing what is called an Elder Rift. Now, these have limited access, much like Path of Exile's mapping system, although you get access to them earlier in progression. However, one of the things that's really striking about them is that you have to augment them in order to have a chance for certain items to drop. And the augment currency that you use to augment them is something that is primarily through the cash store. So for 160 eternal orbs, you can buy yourself a key to one of the greater versions of these rifts. That is basically the primary way you're gonna get these things. Alternately, you can get them once a day for free, but if you wanna run more than one of them a day, if you wanna roll the dice more than once a day on getting one of these legendary gem upgrades that are gated behind this content, then you're going to need to buy these things for 160 eternal orbs, which it turns out is four Australian dollars. Notice that there's this awkward obfuscation of what the currency is. 
the sort of thing that's common in a lot of free-to-play games that decide to hide just how bad the monetization is. They make it really complex to work out how much something is in terms of currency that you're familiar with. So instead of it being, you know, in priced in dollars or in pounds or whatever the currency is in your country, it's priced in some specific alternate currency that only exists in the game. And one of the things that was really obnoxious is that the smallest package of this currency that you can buy is actually not enough to buy anything that I could see in the store. But it gets worse than this. There is a battle pass that has a whole bunch of things that you have uh, that you have to buy that have a big impact on gameplay. So things like uh, one of the legendary gems that you can get is something that you can only get by buying a limited time battle pass and completing various in-game objectives. So I think that that's got 33 days after which it's no longer going to be available for sale. And if you haven't bought it by then, well, that's the whole monetization model, isn't it? You miss out. In terms of other things I saw that were really obnoxious, there's a bunch of RNG oriented crafting systems that come up later in the game that require you to use these eternal orbs, which I presume are cash store only. I've not seen any sources of them that aren't cash store yet. I don't know in terms of whether there's other ways of getting these currencies, but they're used to modify items randomly. And again, it's a random thing that may or may not have the result you want, but that costs real world money for every single attempt. Ultimately, my conclusion after playing through Diablo Immortal for a short period of time is that every franchise has an ending. And a lot of these endings happen when the story is finished. In Diablo's case, the ending happens when trust is lost between the publisher, when respect for the publisher is lost. That has happened. People that have watched Game of Thrones Season 8. Now, you might disagree, but most people, including myself, thought that Game of Thrones Season 8 was a big disappointment. Now, when Game of Thrones Season 8 happened, a lot of people lost trust in the writing team behind it. A lot of people thought it was just such a disappointment that it had killed the entire excitement in all of the parts of that franchise, including the shows that they had enjoyed in the past. So for me, Seasons 1, 2, 3, and 4 of Game of Thrones were absolute classics. Seasons 5, 6, and 7 were a bit weaker, 7 quite a bit weaker, but I was still excited for Season 8. Then it came out, and even though I was less negative about it than most of the internet, I still thought that it was something that had killed my interest in rewatching the series. Well, you have just seen the Game of Thrones season 8 moment of the Diablo franchise. I'll leave it there. Me have interesting results.